here today with, today with a bit of a different, smaller game. This is Part-Time UFO, a game you can get on your phone, iOS Android at least, but also on your Switch, as it is my case here. And it is a paid game without microtransactions, thankfully. First, I want to just say that I found this game very randomly while watching a YouTube video called Why do Japanese UFOs look so different? And that video having gameplay for this game and me thinking, wow, this looks adorable, I really want to try it. This game has a pixelated aesthetic with very bright colors that to me, with this unique gameplay, is very reminiscent of the Nintendo DS. There are various locations and settings the levels take place in, but the one constant is how cheerful and goofy everything is. Things like the farmer smiling as you help them load up their produce, or the Greek statues wearing protective helmets and looking at plans while you build a Greek monument. It's a game that inherently makes you feel good just by how it's presented. But now describing a couple of the levels, you're probably wondering what this game is actually about. Story-wise, it's very simple. The first level has our small UFO helping a farmer carry his fruits into his truck upon which the farmer pays the little UFO leading him to help more humans which is a very cute and simple setup and that's really all you need. The gameplay then is just that, helping people with your claw which is your main piece of gameplay. Almost like a claw machine, you drop the claw on command and then grab onto things somewhat flimsy depending on the item and how you grab it. Of course larger and wider items being harder to grab and to carry around. Then what you do with that said item will depend a lot on the mission of course. Like the examples I gave for piling things up so everything fits inside some sort of container. This will be the very first few missions as it is fairly simple. Later on though, big part of it will be actually piling things and building things like the Greek monuments I already mentioned or piling cheerleaders to make a human tower or an ice cream for example to make a dessert or even what looks like tetris pieces to build some sort of specific shape like it's a small puzzle because that's what it is these levels are at the end of the day small puzzles but because of the wide range of solutions you can have it never has that same feeling as other puzzle games usually have of kind of pushing you mentally being a lot more relaxing and casual and that also of course being helped by the game being both funny and cute. And I know I'm saying that a lot, but it is like the main thing you feel, or at least I did when playing this game, which is expected out of the Kirby developers, Hal's Laboratory. Now, with the money you gain from these missions, you can buy costumes for your UFO, and these are purely cosmetic. And they all have a unique animation and that again is also purely cosmetic. But it's still a nice thing to have, especially without microtransactions. My biggest problem with this game actually came from just wishing there was more of it. There are only 27 levels and a boss and a tower minigame where you try to build the tallest building possible with random items. This being the games of the main story, so to say. Then also having a post-end game mode that you need to use in-game money to buy tickets to play through on a timer. And this mode just did not satisfy my desire for more of this game. As really what I wanted was more areas, as there's really just a handful of them since in those 27 levels the same area will be used a lot with slightly different scenarios. But it's also important to remember it's a $5 or 8 for the Switch version that only ever asks for those $5. Also the Switch version is more expensive, yes, but it also has local multiplayer, which is something to consider. It is co-op, as in you basically do regular levels but have two people there. It's clearly somewhat tacked on, there isn't much synergy here or anything you can do together really, but I would still argue it's a nice mode to play with someone who maybe is very young and maybe can't grasp video games very well quite yet, even though that could also turn out to be a very frustrating experience as they send anything you build to the ground. Regardless though, let's move on to the graphics and sound. I feel like I really said most of what I wanted to say about the game's looks, 
so I will focus more on the technical side. It does run at 60 FPS on the switch and it barely sips on the battery. And I have that first model switch that has the depressingly low battery life. So if you have the new one, I don't know, you could probably play this game all day. Now sound wise it's very cheerful and for the most part calming and relaxing but it can also ramp up for the more tight and intense moments that you can surprisingly encounter in this game. And with a mostly electronic sound it's once again to me very reminiscent of the DS and fair to say I like it. Even if, and I say this a lot and it's not really a criticism please uh, trust me that I'll probably not listen to it outside of the game. I just say this because once in a while a game soundtrack comes out that I really enjoy and I even listen to it separately. But that's very rare honestly. And this soundtrack is still really good and I hope that comes across. Regardless though, Part Time UFO is getting a 7 out of 10. It's a small and nice casual little game you can just pop in and enjoy for a few minutes or beat it all in one go like me. Hopefully it gets a sequel with just a lot more levels and locations, that is all I want and I would give it an 8 or higher easily. Now recommendations, should you play this? Well yeah you should if you're into more casual relaxing experience. Well, relaxing sometimes. In terms of price, I'm not even gonna bother as it sells under $10 regardless of where you get it. But I will say that I can't speak for the phone's controls of this game. And of course, the Switch version does have co-op, so it is something to consider. Personally, I say if you have a Switch, go with that version. Especially since you know it will run at 60 FPS when on the phone it will depend on what phone you have of course. Regardless of your decision though, I hope this video helped you with it. And regardless of that, I hope you consider subscribing and liking and even commenting all the things you can do for free here on YouTube. And regardless of that, I hope you're having a good day and goodbye.